What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Erica, from the Classy Con blog. I have an awesome Tech Tuesday here for you guys. We have a Breaking Into Tech Careers first, one of our first partnerships we've done. And we just want so many people to be able to enjoy getting their first tech job, making progress, changing their LinkedIn, changing their resume. And I said, man, I got the guy for y'all and really the team because all this stuff comes together through teams. So introduce yourself to the audience today. Let the people know who you are. For sure. How you guys doing? My name is Trev, co-founder of Wealth University and the Remote Job Program. And I'm here today to man, give you guys some tips, some help, and hopefully you guys gain some experience and some knowledge on how to land a tech role or break it into remote jobs. Man, what made you hop into like helping other people get into tech once you got into tech? Okay, awesome question. So basically a little bit background info on me. Um, I played college football. Mm -hmm. I got my degree. I actually majored in business management and I got my minor in econ. And a lot of people feel like once you get that degree, it's off to the moon, you right. know, and um, unfortunately, it's not really that way. When we start to see college debt and the amount of money people are making with these degrees, mm -hmm. it's not really making too much sense. So, you know, I got to have the luxury of two jobs that um, get into sales early, um, as well as my business partner who will be joining us as well in the near future. He actually has sales with just a high school diploma, you know, so we kind of put our heads together and we figured out a method to where, you know, we can really help people, um, you know, make that transition into working remote, working, getting into tech sales, because there's a lot more lucrative opportunities. Man, you know, so the past three, really four years, I've been preaching hard about tech. I live in Austin, Texas. I was surrounded by tech friends. They were taking six months off. They were taking sabbatical, still had a job. They'd have a baby, yep. have four months paternity leave. And I'd be like, what? And so- and so all of them, what, what made it interesting to me is all of them have different careers and the word tech is just like a blanket word. We, we think Revenge of the Nerds, 1980s movies out here. And I go, no, there's mm -hmm. all type of people who would fit under the umbrella of tech. And, and that was kind of why I started really pushing hard on, on Tech Tuesdays to give people yeah. like a realistic view of what uh, tech careers are and, and what they can be for people, especially in the future. Exactly. I think, yeah. So, you know, some for people sure. are going to say, man, you, you, you know, you have, you're a tall guy, you got tats, you got dreads, like you're a tech person. Like what? what? Right? Exactly. <laughs> I get that all the time. Yeah. Actually, a lot. Yeah. And so I want you to under to kind of explain more to people, like what was your first tech job and, and, and kind of what was the transition after that? For sure. So my first tech job, um, I was actually at Bradbury Unlimited and I, I was basically just an SBR. And mm -hmm. in that SBR role, I was setting appointments. Um, and then I eventually had the chance to be promoted to an account executive. Mm -hmm. So, but to build my experience getting into that, I was also doing high ticket sales and low ticket sales. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my transferable skills though, previous to that, I was actually working at a sports company and I was a business development specialist on an internship. So they gave me the, 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 uh, the position, but it was like, I'll work in that position off my internship. But like you said, being able to transition because I was corporate. It was every single day. Mm -hmm. I was at the office nine to five. Yep. And, you know, I was just seeing all this information about getting in to SDR role. But basically, that's how I was able to transition. I took those sales skills that I developed in that internship because the offer they made me at the end of it didn't make sense. And I actually started applying to remote roles. Right. And that's how I landed the SDR position. And I destroyed the SDR position. I killed it, you know, with the appointments book. Um, 250k in commission and sales, um, just little things like that. So I was like, wow, I really have a talent in that. And looking at everyone in my circle lacking those opportunities, but just hitting on the fact that what you said is like, dang, you're in tech. At, uh, at one point, I had that mindset too. You know, I don't really have the skills to get into tech. I don't know how to code. I don't know. I have all these different cert certs and things like that. People think they need, and really, the only thing you need to break into tech sales or break into any remote role is communication skills. For sure, for sure. A lot of people get hung up on the degree. The degree. I need to go get a degree for four years. I'm gonna take all this time. And my biggest thing to people is don't waste the next four to five years trying to get a degree, and then now you got a new set of challenges because you waited four more years to get into this type of career field. 
I, I'm yeah. like, learn from people who are actually in the field, on the ground, doing what they're saying they're doing, and, you know, help desk and SDR roles, people kind of talk down on them, but I'm like, these are great launching pads to kind of see in the space, where's the next place you want to go? Uh, one of my roles 100%. I received was an SDR role for a, um, you know, I can say it now, but it's essentially CrowdStrike, right? And so cybersecurity. Yeah. So I learned on the job, like the levels of cybersecurity, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't go further, too much further in that career, but because I really was just doing it to test myself. But I love the atmosphere of like, man, I'm learning a book's worth of knowledge in 90 days. Like, yep. I, I, it took me years in college to even get that knowledge. And so I just want people to understand, 100%. like, the opportunities are out here. Uh, and right now you have 75% of working Americans making $30,000 a year or less. So and they have uh, a college degree sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and they also so put that on top of that. So really you're left with nothing. So so now if I introduce you to a, a role where you're gonna make 50 to 65,000 entry level, some people say, Erica, that's not enough. And I go, This is your foot in the door to the hundred thousand, right? I may not 100%. be able to get you straight to a hundred thousand the first job, but maybe I can get you to 80, maybe I can get you 75. Yeah. And then in six months' time, now you have all these skills. You interview better. You're more confident in the conversation. And don't discount the OTE as well. You know, there those on-target earnings. Yeah. You know, we've definitely seen people getting those forty-five, fifty thousand dollars roles with that other forty-five to fifty thousand OTE. They're just trying to see how far you're willing to go and see how much you can expand within the role. Yeah, it, it was crazy. I saw somebody's thing offer was like 75K, but their OTE. You could get all with it. Basically, you can make 240000 that year. And anything Easy. else you made, it was like cut off. <laughs> like stop. Yep. No yep. more. <laughs> For sure. Uh, the opportunities it, are crazy. Yeah, super crazy. Okay, so now when people hear, you went to school for business, you didn't even go to school for coding. Like, like in this period, in this time, what are some of the resources that people need to get better? And this is part of why we, we partnered, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. You have the Wealth University. Uh, well, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. So um, when you say um, get better, are you saying in essence of like the tools that we we provide inside Wealth University? Right. Get better at interviewing, get better at job training, get better at how can I speak the lingo when I'm on the phone yeah. or in the interviews. Um, you guys have some of the tools to help people get better in that process. For sure. Yeah. So we do include um, like interview prep and mock interviews. So along that process, for example, if you are, you know, a waitress, mm -hmm. for example, we'll just take someone down from there because sometimes those are the people who are like, how can I even break into it? I have no experience. And what we would actually do is we help them. They talk to people and communicate with people all day long. So what we would do is we would work on those hard skills and those soft skills to make them become more transferable, you know, in a role like the SDR role, in a sales role things of that nature. So in there, um, people are like, I don't understand the tech. We'll equip them with all the, the terms they need to know. So if they've never used the CRM, things of that nature, we can explain to them the type of CRMs that are out there. So when they are thrown that question, you know, there's no curveballs. But even professionals who are making 150K and they're in office every day, but they're like, well, working remote requires a little bit more IT work. We can still do, there's things in our course that will help them, you know, shorten, how long it takes to actually learn just transitioning they have the skills but it's just honing in on certain things that they can tighten up especially when working remote that we'll walk them through in our interview prep in our mock process um, even when tailoring their resume in the skills where they're like well what type of skills do i need we'll make those skills that they have in office that they've used in the excel anything that they've used currently we'll just make it more tailored to a remote role because all those skills that they currently have, that's exactly what they're looking for. Right, right. So my biggest thing too, when I talk to people is I want them to understand that uh, people are like, Erica, the layoffs, they're laying all these people off. Mm -hmm. Every day I tap on that phone, that internet is, that indeed is bing, pinging me. The job boards are pinging me. There's opportunities everywhere to still everywhere. get into tech. Explain yes. that to people who are like, but I saw the news. It said layoffs. <laughs> For sure. So, I mean, when you look at, I mean, even quarterly, even some of these in-person jobs have layoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, 
So I think they're just highlighting the tech world, but at the same time, it's also because I feel like there's a little bit of fear being pushed in that too, because when there's too much of a good thing, we sometimes want to shed some type of shade on it. Right. And I personally feel like that's what it is, because let's say you were working as in a restaurant at Amazon with a college degree, and you do get laid off in those first three months or four months. Guess what you now have? You now have experience that another company will now pay you for and most likely will pay you more for. So I think also it's the mindset and also the approach, but also, again, a lot of these big companies, if you look at the news, there's also two ways to approach it and look at it as well. There's a lot of these skyscrapers going vacant. Why? Because a lot of these companies are going 100% remote or they're partnering with AI. Yeah. So either way, I believe it is the future. Mm -hmm. And and so one of the best parts about you telling us your first job as an SDR role is people think tech and they think immediately it's got to be like a technical company. They got to be in Silicon Valley. Tech is a little bit of everywhere. If you think about the fact that, and I'm here in Texas, just example, H-E-B, Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, All of them. Everywhere. Insurance USAA. Company, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All have customer support customer success roles, SDR roles, like this is a part of their regular catalog that's just getting expanded. Uh, they need security, 100%. right? So people are like, cybersecurity, yep. where, where would I work? And I'm like, you'd work for the local credit union that needs protection. You'd yeah. work anywhere. Yep. So no, I, just 100%. Wanna, yeah, I just always want to dispel some of those myths of like, where I don't live in Austin like you do. And I'm like, you don't have to. You don't have to. And there's mm -hmm. remote yeah. jobs and roles. Literally, if you go on LinkedIn and you search, mm -hmm. there's some in every single state in almost every city. And the best part about, you know, landing that remote job, it doesn't have to be in your city. Right. You probably see numerous, of you know, jobs that are built out that way. Well, I even worked in financial aid office at my college and I was like, we had people that didn't show up, but they were security based. So, you know, yep. you, even then years ago, you had these roles that are everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's some type of tech, whether it's your credit union, it's Understand. Target, it's whatever, you know? And if you are a person, you know, hitting on, like if you don't want to get in sales or sometimes you don't want to just be on the phone, like you said, there are those, those different positions where you don't have to do no communicating. Sometimes you're just disputing a problem and resolving an issue mm -hmm. and it doesn't require no phone, no anything, you know? So there's like a role for what you were saying for almost every single person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So you came in, you've been you getting the experience, and you're like, man, how can I help more people? Is this what happened when you started to brainstorm your company to come up through? Yeah. So basically, that's exactly what happened, especially with, you know, um, college is, you know, college is great. I'm not going to be one of those people to downplay college because yeah. sometimes that's it's a place where you selection. can explore. Exactly. And you can explore more opportunities if you use college the right way. See, most People go party four years, five years of college and yeah. then say, oh, it was a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? Or we were chasing females or whatever you're into, you know, um, <laughs> and they missed the opportunity. You know what I mean? So right. like instead of going talking to boosters, talking to alumni, trying to get into those rooms, like I said, wow. I took that internship. And sometimes you can do all of those things and still come up short. So I also have a passion in making sure we're extending that dollar that you went and you earned in college, yeah. you know, just don't get that degree and just be like, oh, well, there's no jobs out there. So I will just go be a manager or a, be a manager at Best Buy or things like that. And those jobs aren't bad because if you have a plan, yeah. we all start somewhere. Right. But I'm just saying, if you went to school for four years, make someone pay you for that. Like you, they made mm -hmm. you pay. You know what I mean? So um, I just had that passion of just for sure, you know, making sure people are in those positions. When you look at the debt, and where we're at in the average American, you know, I can get long-winded on that half too, you know, but, you know, when you do the debt to income ratio and most of that is college debt and then they can't get approved for a mortgage, but their job's only paying them 65, 70K a yep. year and on, a, and on a good day sometimes for some people and you're just, it really doesn't make sense. So I just wanted to provide a resource to where, you know, people really understand the opportunities that are out there. Um, even for myself, when I did land that remote role, you know, some companies don't like that. 
you yep. know, but now I'm fully self-employed. We do this full time and I own this company. So I jobs that, you know, yeah. people sometimes don't like that. And employers hate to see people do that. But we were job stacking at such a high rate. At one point, we had two, three different jobs, me and my business partner. You know what I mean? And so we got to perfect our process. In right. that. And, you know, eventually, you know, with companies and contracts, that is illegal. So that's why, you know, at one point we were like, we're making enough money to at least go educate the world and help other people take on these opportunities. Man, you know, the funny thing about, I like to use the words job stack, right? Some people call it overworked. And I'm like, you might be overworking it with just one job, right? So I, 100%. Love, <laughs> I love the word job stack instead of overworked. Um, what I've noticed here, in, and I'm just going to say in the investor space, in the oil and gas, in the real estate space, I would meet countless what we call job stack engineers and software people. And they were constantly putting the money into investments. And my biggest thing I would tell people is like, you need a bigger shovel to get free. And so at some point, you, you need to have to decide what is going to be my shovel. Am I going to go get overtime? Am I going to start a different career? Um, am I going to go to blue collar trades, white collar trades? Somewhere in your journey, when you awaken to your college debt and personal debt and like financial freedom, the goal of it. Yeah. Uh, you're like, man, I need a bigger shovel. And so I want right. you to look at this opportunities with tech careers as a bigger shovel. Uh, I had one lady yeah. who just looked at it as she's a stay-at-home mom. And she was able to get a customer service job that paid 25 an hour from home. They shipped the laptop. They shipped Beautiful. the headset. All and, equipment included. We've landed some people with yeah. those roles too. Exactly those roles. New equipment included. Um, nah, I mean, the opportunities in this space, you know, are limitless for sure. Yeah. So as we start trying to help, like my goal is to help. I told people in the group, I want to help a thousand people get into tech careers this year. I don't know if I'm hitting this year. I got 10 months left. We're going to hit it this year. We got nine months left. We're going to hit it this year. Yeah, I feel like we can hit it because there's so many people who are prepped, ready to go and ready to learn. And so that that's what's most exciting to me is is seeing people kind of transition over to their new career. I'm, I'm excited for yeah. it. Yeah. Um, what are 100%. some things you see in the next two to three years for you guys in this company as far as opportunities and the job market? Um, so I think the opportunities are going to continue to definitely just expand. Mm -hmm. um, I think the roles are actually, there's going to be a, I think there's going to be a thousand more roles because as much as people are fearing AI, mm -hmm. well, guess what? There's AI technology and software that you still need to sell. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I definitely think, um, you know, the, as far as in where we are as a company, um, our goal is to, um, help, you know, a hundred thousand people land remote jobs and our overall goal with wealth university is to make that number, um, smaller of the people who graduate from college and only 10% of those people actually land roles that are something that are, um, in the same niche as what they have in their degree. So, you know, just some of those two things are are really right now our main focus is main focus is we really want to help and continue to employ everyone who is really selling themselves short. No matter if you just graduated from high school or you just graduated from college, um, and you just feel like you know you have more in you and there you do have more in you and there is more opportunity out there. And uh, that the goal I have a hundred thousand person. Uh, clients, customers goal, because I know that's how many people we can reach and eventually maybe scale it to the point to where we are that one-stop shop um, for business professionals who currently feel like they're underpaid, mm -hmm. for college graduates who feel like they're stuck in a box and people who couldn't afford to go to college and still have a career. Right. You know, so my thing is uh, a lot of people say, well, Erica, what's the cost? What's the price? What does the company do? And I just, I put it to you this way. We help you get prepared for jobs in various ways, yep. resumes, uh, your mock interviews. Uh, I even encourage people to record their interviews so that we can help you in the process. Yep. Like what happened now on top of that, uh, is it 50 a day? I think we apply what 50 a day, apply to 50 jobs. Yes, a day yep. 50 a day, 50 jobs a day. We'll apply on autopilot for them in their career choice that they're mm -hmm. looking to jump into. Right. And so, so many people say, what's the price? And I go, hop on the phone with us. Let's get a call. Let's see where you're at. Let's see if you're even ready for this opportunity, because that's the most important yep. part. Uh, secondly, on that is a lot of people ask me today, well, what if I'm in this career, but I want to go in that career? Can you guys help me? 100 percent. 
So we'll take those skills they currently have that are on their resume. Mm -hmm. um, and what we'll do is when they tell us the career they're looking to jump into, first we'll consult them and let's see if it's realistic for sure. For and 90% sure. of the time it is realistic. Mm -hmm. We just might have to, again, change the some of those things it's never lying or we're making up information For sure. it's again just taking those skills and basically putting them in um a tunnel and a viewpoint for that new employer that that career you're trying to jump into understands and they at least have things that they can work with because there's always a training period right. with no matter what company you work with i love it i love it so listen you guys a word i usually love to use is curate Right. We want to curate that information yeah. to fit the job that you're looking for. And that's what the team is for. But listen, where are some places they can find us on the Internet? Please let them know. So on the Internet, you can find us at wealthuniversity.io. That is our website. Mm -hmm. um, our Instagram is also rich off Wi-Fi. Um, the O is actually a zero. Um, and, uh, we have Sharif 2D. That's my business partner. We have hundred K on TikTok. And he's always dropping interview questions, live interviews, mock, uh, mock calls and all those things there. I love it. I love it. Listen, you guys, we'll come to you guys with more clips, more information. We want to make sure everybody's getting traction in their career goal. And listen, this is your girl, Erica from the classy climb blog coming to you with a quick one. And we'll see you guys soon.